believe we're going back to the Queen's Privy Council and imperialism at its finest, led by the spokesperson of a group of researchers that is incomparable. Welcome to the show, Michael McKibben. Hi, Douglas. Great to talk to you today. Well, we haven't talked to you in so long. People have been sending in messages saying, are you guys okay? Did the canaries die down in the mines? Is Michael yes, coming back up? Yes, they have died. <laughs> they have died, have they? It's been pretty toxic down there. <laughs> okay, well, you've done it again. And, I mean, I'm just, I was with some people today who are big followers of, of yours and ours, and they were just saying, would you guys give us a break? Could you just stop revealing giant bombshells all the time? Could you could you do like a, a aim for truth for dummies to catch us up? Because, you know, every time we turn around, holy Lord, you're revealing another one of the 600 members of the Privy Council who is a Sith Lord on par excellence. I mean, on a level that we cannot even imagine. And I just want to say the reason that we're having to reveal so much and so fast is because the fake news is not doing their job and they haven't done it for decades. Betsy, right. they're reporting on the 10 uh, fake bombs that were sent to the uh, 10 people in the Democratic Party who deserve it most, including George Soros. So, yeah, you're right. They're not doing their job because they didn't even they didn't even put a postage stamp approved. You know, they didn't stamp the stamps. So these 10 bombs came through the mail, but they actually didn't go through the mail. <laughs> well, the funnier one was the one to Eric Holder in care of... Uh... Uh, the lady down in Florida, what's her name? Um, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Debbie Wasserman Schultz, yes. That was really funny. Well, let's remember that the prostitute who said that she was raped by Trump and um, that other guy, Jeffrey Epstein, when they when she gave her number and they called, the court called it back because she was a no-show, it was the Democratic National Committee's headquarters. Oh, really? That's the joke that this is Debbie Wasserman Schultz. They were sent from the Democratic National Committee. Donna Brazil has to do something these days, and that was the best little October surprise they could get. But you have a better one. You have the breaking news on who the bimbo is that has come over the uh, deputy prime minister, ex-deputy prime minister of Britain has come to take over Facebook because dude Zuckerberg said, free speech, uh, it's too hard to do. We're not going to do it anymore. Yeah. He literally said this, and every single day, someone in Facebook is coming out saying, oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's part of our policy. Uh, no, we give away all your secrets. Yeah, oh, no, we sell everything you do to everybody. And now the Atlantic Council gave Facebook $1.5 billion, along with George Soros funds, to start up what George Soros already did in Europe and in Britain, and that was to incorporate the digital forensic research laboratory programs that basically do take away free speech. And that has now been fully incorporated in Facebook, but they had to bring over this Privy Council member. I'm saving his name for you because he's got so many names like all the rest of those lords that I, I can't remember all of them. But would you tell us about the new guy in the Privy Council, the Supreme Imperialist, the Lord President of the Privy Council, and why in the world he has come to Facebook. <clears throat> yeah, his name is Sir Nicholas William Peter Clegg. And I had never heard of him. He's on the list of the Privy Council. He's been on a long time. And we started digging into his background. I assigned some people to it, and they went down into the mines. And then uh, almost immediately, they started throwing stuff back out. And uh, we discovered that uh, he was the Lord President of the Privy Council from 2010 to 2015, which would mean that he was either directing or overseeing Christopher Steele and Stephen Halper. So this man is clearly at the center of the corruption not only in Britain, but also around the planet. And the amazing thing is to see him now moving to Facebook, uh, in my mind, is clear evidence of foreign interference in our elections. I mean, I don't see how you can get around this. And there's, a, there's an article that's just been written about that, where the, and the, the, the picture is of 
Prince Charles knighting this man, uh, Sir Sir Nick. That's what they call him. But you start looking at the uh, press that he's gotten in in England, and um, nobody's too impressed with this man. And yet he has been given one of the most powerful positions on the planet right now, which I call chief propagandist for Facebook. Wow. And he's a soy boy. He is such a soy boy. And you went into his whole past and you've demonstrated that this guy has hold, held so many positions that he didn't have time to even go do any one of them. I mean, and he failed at most of the things he did. He, A deputy prime minister who right. really is not popular, who really... Why in the world would he come to America? He is a British citizen, and we know that what is going on is free speech is being squelched in Facebook, squelched in Google, right. squelched in all these social medias. And so I'm going to just say, I guess this guy is like the Queen's Privy Council Sith Lord. He's like the Sith Lord of other Sith Lords, and he was the Lord President of the Privy Council. What I want to know is right. there's 600 members. How many people does it take? to help the queen get into her bathtub in her privy. That's what I want to know. Well, it it looks to me like every time we dig into one of these privy council members, we we just uncover mountains of corruption. It it's appearing to me and we haven't looked at everyone, so we can't generalize. But there are a lot of these people uh, interacting with each other and it appears to be one big insider trading scheme for the entire planet. That's what it's looking like. And this guy was on top of that heap. He was directing Sir Jeffrey Patty. He was directing Lord Mark Malik Brown and uh, Sir Richard Dearlove. So uh, for him to move, for, by the way, he's never held a non-political job in his career. He, after he left Cambridge, of course, all these people either go to Cambridge or Oxford. After he left Cambridge, he started working for the European Union, and then he slid right over into uh, being a mem member of Parliament in the UK, and did that for quite a while until 2015, when his when his own constituents finally kicked him out. And then he began forming companies in the background, shell companies, uh, and uh, d doing things with his wife, who was a Spanish lawyer who was in 2016 appointed to the board of UBS Limited, the Swiss bank, and then uh, was immediately uh, made chairman of chairperson of the audit committee at UBS Limited. So this is a mover and shaker person. Uh, I, I do have to mention because it's quite uh, there's a lot of press on it that. Uh, the the public school private school that he attended uh, is now infamous for uh, decades and decades of pedophilia among the senior head the headmaster and staff at the church where he, uh, at the school where he uh, attended and his his last year in school he was called the head prefect or head boy so. The other thing that is, I have to be delicate with this subject, but I mean, if somebody is a is a um, victim of pedophilia, th they were victimized. So I'm not going to blame them for uh, having that done to them. And, I'm, and it, it, there's no information that would suggest that uh, Sir Nick uh, was involved in that, but. Uh, why do we see so many of the British elite involved in pedophilia? And why do we see so many of these elite boarding private schools in England being convicted of, of all this pedophilia? Is this the core corruption, the core character uh, vacuum in, in the British culture that they're struggling with now? It, it sure seems like it to me. Well, you asked the question, uh, so I'll give an answer, because, you know, I loved giving my opinion on things. Where does the pedophilia come from in Britain? It is an institution that came out of the Vatican and Rome, and they took it from the ancient Roman Senate. The Roman Senate, at the end of its um, reign, was so decadent 
that they conducted their meetings in the baths and, and they all had their boys. So uh, homosexuality was literally, it was part and parcel of running the entire Roman Empire, passed into the Roman Church, and then, of course, from the Vatican, it passed into uh, the highest levels of uh, of the Parliament in Britain, as well as the monarchy. And these things have been considered the rights of monarchies. Monarchies, they're, they're not bound by any rules. They can do whatever they want. Now, when we look at this guy, uh, well, let's just call him Sir Nicky. Sir Nicky is such a soy boy, and he he's... He's a sad creature. He was an elected representative to the European Union, and he is a George Soros bunk buddy. He is so yeah. George Soros bunk buddy that Soros' open society was only topped by Sir Lord Nicky, uh, Lord President Nicky, uh, with his open reason group. And open reason was a justification for why the European Union needed to do whatever George Soros said particularly through his Open uh, Society uh, Foundation, which is into open borders, and basically has been controlling the European Union ever since it was created. So what we have here now is a connection between George Soros, this is bunk buddy, Sir Nicky, yeah. coming to Facebook as a foreign agent to meddle in the 2016 election with the Atlantic Council's and George Soros's paid-for program called the Digital Forensic Research Laboratory. This is, as you said, open warfare, not only against free speech, but against meddling in this election. Absolute foreign intervention. Right. This is sedition. This is hard proof. This is hard proof that he is a foreign agent come to America to take over Facebook and control our elections. And we know this, this is hard proof. Yeah, and we know that dude Zuckerberg's got to go. He's an idiot. So they sent, uh, you can fill in the details. I don't know the details. Didn't they send Sheryl Sandberg over there to try to prop up the shop and it still didn't help and he kept making, he's just made mistakes every single day, every time well, he no, opens no, his no, mouth. no, 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 no. I need to correct you there. Sheryl Sandberg is the boss. <laughs> <Joe Hesden. laughs> That's right. That's right. Zuckerberg, uh, Sandberg was in place long before Zuckerberg came along. Right. She she was working with Larry Summers since the early 1990s, mm -hmm. and has followed him throughout his career as chief of staff, as chief researcher, uh, and then hired him in as um, uh, when they took over Instagram. And um, he, I'm sure, is her closest closest advisor. Now, there's also the Strategic Communications Laboratory, which is directly linked to the Queen's Privy Council, but there's that other one that you just brought up, someone had mentioned it to us, What uh, that we had researched that Lord Malik Brown was involved in. Um, I just saw your notification on that, the International Strategic Communication... Oh, ICG, International uh, Crisis Group. There we go, International Crisis right. Group, which has the Clintons in it, it has all these Privy Council members in it, it has George Soros in it. These are the dogs who come in create crisis, and then think that they're the ones who need to be paid way, to solve the crisis. By the way, that early 1993, right, right before the, uh, they had the big meeting to give the FBI the backdoor keys, and uh, right before the Highlands group formed. Yeah. All very cu curious timing. And now Alexander Soros is in that group. Uh, so he's carrying on his father's good work, and people don't understand that. Yeah. Frank Joostra is in that group. I've been doing more research on him. That guy is so disgustingly guilty. George, of course, is in the group. Um, Lund is in the group. Uh, uh, oh, all kinds of crazy people. Basically, if you are uh, Lawrence Green. Sumner, uh, of course, Larry Summers is. Uh, entire countries are. Malik Brown is, of course. Uh, and as you look at this group, what do they do? They're like ambulance chasers. They create emergencies so they can go collect charitable yep. donations to help those people in the emergencies, and they don't help them at all, just like the Clinton Foundation. Absolutely no help whatsoever. Open Society Initiative is in it. I mean, everybody's in this group. And yep. so you had pointed this out before, that out of the Privy Council, they do things that are completely illegal in America, but they're not illegal there. And so now we have uh, Sir Lord President Nicky coming to Facebook and basically bringing his criminal, imperialistic, Sith Lord ways to America and with absolute, complete disregard for any law, 
in uh, the rule of law, uh, the uh, the fact that he is propagandizing and that this is actually campaigning for the op for the uh, for the left really, and not claiming it. These are in fact these are elect. This is election rigging. It's election rigging on so many levels. I don't think that you can count all of them. But one thing I want to ask: Lord Nicky has. How many conflicts of interest? Hmm. I didn't actually total it up, but if you, not counting the Privy Council, which is like 600 members, there's there's a direct list of items that he has disclosed in his various biographies that put his conflicts list in the two or 300 key names plus the Privy Council. Now, as, a, as an officer of Facebook... Our public laws require him to disclose all these conflicts. Well, if he does, he's not going to be able to do any work here because he's conflicted with just about everybody and his mother. And we don't want to talk about his mother or his grandmother, or maybe you should talk about his grandmother because it's really a funny story. Well, the the, the, the uh, fascinating thing for me is that uh, we're looking at uh, the history of the uh, socialist slash communist movement uh, in uh, Britain and Europe, and as it turns out, his great aunt uh, was a lifelong spy mistress of H.G. Wells, of Maxim Gorky, of Guy Burgess of the infamous Cambridge Five spy ring in the, the U.K. So um, Sir Nick grew up around uh, some of the some of the most notorious spies that have ever uh, operated in this earth. Wow. Oh, that's right. It wasn't his grandmother. It's his, what, great aunt? Great aunt. She was like a Matahari so of, yeah, of, of the he's biggest... He's definitely uh, tied to uh, Soviet and uh, Russian and um, Estonian royalty. And people forget that the Brits are deeply connected to the Russians. Now, I just want to say something. I just saw a beautiful video of, I think it was Tommy Robinson, leading a crowd chanting for Trump. And there are many British who are wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people the problem is we need to help you in your revolution against your monarchy for god's sake and literally for god's sake because the monarchy claims to have the ear of god and that god only whispers in the queen's ear that's why she has the divine right of the monarchies of kings and queens. well I, i've lived over there for six years i don't think anybody really believes that but we now know that it's true because we can see that the Privy Council controls the whole world to the same imperialism that the British uh, East India Company and the Dutch East India Company did before them. So what we're right, seeing... Right, but I don't think any of that's coming from God. No, and nobody knows this. I bet you you don't, you don't can't find a, a Brit who can actually tell you that they know that this is going on. I've never heard right, any British person true. ever speak I about this. I just asked somebody the other day, a very prominent British businessman, said he had never heard of Lord Mark Malik Brown or Sir Jeffrey Patty. Which is amazing. And this guy switched in. Just amazing. Because uh, Jeffrey Patty basically controls, uh, what, the uh, nuclear world, oh, the uranium the world. He controls so much. Uh, he controls the Queen's golden shares. Plus, I forgot the name of the man. I think his name was Michael. Is it Michael Caine, who was the president of the uh, Bank of England, or the president of the Bank of England is on the Privy Council, and also the Queen has her own court that overrules all other courts, and the head of that court is in the Privy Council. So they got the bank right. tied up, they got the courts tied up, they got the propaganda right. tied up, they got the elections tied up, they got all the money flowing, they got Serco tied up, they got the the Crown agents. They have, This is an institution beyond anybody's imagination. Yes, uh, the senior executive service took notes and uh, they're they're pikers uh, with insider trading, as compared to the uh, Privy Council. I mean, it's just it's, it's they do hide it, but it's fairly easy now. We know where to look to get all the information to show that these people um, uh, uh, have so many conflicts of interest that they would never pass a smell test for any business in this country. And the problem is that our business people and our pol politicians and judges are taking notes, and are, I think they are all jealous of the Privy Council. And, and that herein is the problem we have, that they have now sent their top man to take over Facebook.
and therefore communicate not only with the American electric, electorate, but also take over the rest of the world through this propaganda mechanism. And they, all of them, that we have researched in the Privy Council, are the top dogs in propaganda. They, right. It's one of the first things they're trained in. And, and, yep. and amazing how many of them come to America and train in American universities so that they can get a real feel of the country that they're going to control later when they come into their power. Now, I like to say, as I did earlier today to some friends, that basically Hillary Clinton is competing with Queen Elizabeth to be the ruler of the world. And because th they'd asked me, why can't the Clintons slow down on making money? And I pointed out that uh, Jonathan Weiner and Adam Waldman and others have pointed out, uh, who were directly connected with her, that Clinton Foundation has actually brought in not $2 billion, but $20 billion. And that's what we know of. Right. Now, we then just, you and the researchers and all those researchers who told you and then we researched it, that in trust, then basically was found to be a tax placed upon every communication, literally every communication on the internet in trust, which is out of uh, basically Little Rock, Arkansas, and the Rose Law Firm and her uh, friend uh, Jerry Jones, 17-year friend working with her, uh, this in trust basically gets a tax on everything coming and going. So when these people down in Arkansas saw that the digital world was going to be the thing they wanted to now become the imperialists of, I think they used the British system to do it. And by golly, they've done a great job. Just like the Brits, they've moved the real money movement to China so that it can't be tracked. And if they get in trouble, well, they can always just move to China, no extradition, move to the Shanghai Economic Zone and get a 17% boost on anything they buy. But that's just my opinion. I want to ask you your opinion on this. Do you think Lord President Sir Nicky <laughs> and all of his other Some titles... British people I talk to don't like it when you do that because oh, you don't show respect. I, d I have no respect for these pigs. This is a monarchical system of imperialism that should have been closed down when we gained yeah. our independence. We should have just gone over to Britain and conquered them at that point because they had not left America and they have not left now. And the U.S. Federal Reserve is owned by, well, don't get me started. So do you think uh, Sir Nicky has come to take Dragonfly the next step and apply it to Facebook, which is the best PSYOPs experiment that the Highlands Forum and Incutel and DARPA ever had? Or do you think he has come to manage the slow, uh, hopefully slower, collapse of Facebook because of the mismanagement of dude Zuckerberg? Oh, I think he's, he's here to uh, pull together the what have been beta tests for their global propaganda system, the Chinese version through the... Uh, the uh, social credit score and Dragonfly, uh, Facebook, and uh, I think they have to focus on Brexit because he's definitely anti-Brexit. And in fact, he wrote a book on it called uh, "Here, Here's the Name of the Book." It's "How to Stop Brexit and Make Britain Great Again." So it's really interesting that even when they're attacking something, they borrow ideas from their opposition because they have no ideas they have no creativity on their own and they're just attacking things but anyway uh, i think that i think they're probably worried that brexit's uh, going to be affirmed a second time and i think he's come in to make sure that that doesn't happen and then in the process they unify the data structures for all of these different efforts into a global system through the uh, Richard C. Walker Internet of Things patents, using IBM and Microsoft technology, along with Cisco and Oracle, uh, and um, several object-oriented uh, uh, database programs they're using with blockchain, and then they've got the system that they've dreamed of. So they're not there yet, but he's come in to make sure that happens, unless President Trump moves against him it, for election meddling which I think is their, is our greatest opportunity to stop this guy. Yeah, and Sir Nicky is a liberal Democrat, basically let's just call him a fascist socialist, who literally was so bad that he had to come out and apologize 
to the people who had elected him because he so pathetically represented them. Well, and there's he, a there's a video, a funny video uh, that uh, somebody in England made. Uh, it's called Nick Clegg says I'm sorry, where he actually goes on. I don't know. It's some, it's some program to apologize for all the promises he hasn't kept. <laughs> they made this funny video. It was so pathetic. It's the, probably the most pathetic little a political piece I've ever seen because what he's saying is I'm a soy boy and I'm so sorry for being a soy boy and, and I'm going to become more of a soy boy right in front of you. And anyway, he's for Brexit, which I like to call make Soros happy again. No, he's an anti-Brexit. I mean anti-Brexit, yes. Right. So he doesn't want to for Britain to separate from the European Union because he's bunk no. buddies with George Soros. Right. And so and everybody else in Europe. Yeah, that's why he, I call he worked it, that was his first job was working for the European Union. Exactly. That's when he came up with open reason, which was a justification for Soros's open society. And so he is basically, you know, uh, being anti-Brexit uh, is really making George Soros happy. And so he's working directly for him. And what well, you... Malik Brown, Malik Brown, if you recall, started an organization called Best of Britain, which which uh, Sir Nick has, has supported as well, along with George Soros. So these guys are all, they're all determined to uh, kill the Brexit initiative because it's too much like the MAGA initiative and is spoiling their plans for the New World Order. It's really obvious. Oh, absolutely. And we saw that Soros, we predicted this would happen even before it started to happen, that Soros was going to turn around the Brexit vote, say that it was uh, illegal, have another vote, but not until he sent, and we already know this, 10,000 Soros foot soldiers onto the streets of Britain, going to every single house, every house convincing the people and literally paying them. The people who just came out uh, for uh, the uh, sticking with the Europe European Union, they, what was it, hundreds of thousands of them in a, in a great uh, uh, demonstration, they were all paid for. Those people were paid just like we saw the caravan uh, coming into southern Mexico uh, be on the way. Before they got started, we saw people handing out money. We saw people. Well, here's, how, here, here's how tightly they control the media in England. I had a friend, uh, this business person was over in England and was traveling around, and I asked him, what's the feeling about Tommy Robinson in the U.K.? And he said, nobody knows anything about a Tommy Robinson. That's how tight Whoa. they control the information to the people, to the citizens of England. Whoa! The only way they're getting this kind of information is from from the alternative media in the U.S. You know, we and get that country. a lot. That people tell us in Europe, the only news they're getting is from alternative news because at this point, it is there is no free speech. Uh, Soros's ten fact checking companies. I don't allow anything to go up on the internet. And I believe that Sir Nicky's coming here because he got to watch what happened with Article 13 in the European Union because he's so intimately involved with that. And he got to see that it was the effective overthrow of the most powerful system of uh, information ever created, of course, the internet. And that it was so effective that I believe he's come to America to simply incorporate the same thing because the George Soros program worked through the Atlantic Council for uh, setting up this, what I call the Ministry of Truth in in Europe, is the same exact thing that Facebook has been given, along with a $1.5 well, billion what, dollar what donation. Well, what makes me so angry is that this guy has never worked a real job in his life. He's only ever done politics. He doesn't know how to do anything besides manipulate other people. He's not like a Trump who's actually built things and created things and started a job and finished it. He's just a talker. And 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 why is he being given such power on this planet? We have got to stop this kind of uh, usurpation of the uh, the will of the people. And the British Queen's British uh, Privy Council is one of the darkest cabals that we've come across. I always thought the Knights of Malta were pretty darn bad, but now that I see these people who are in the Privy Council, and we've only uh, really brought to the surface uh, perhaps a dozen of them, each one of them seems to outdo the previous one. It right. is just astounding that anybody could be put in these positions. But this is a collective. 
There is no individuality. There is no creativity. It is surely the cleverness, the cleverness of the seven deadly sins, the cleverness of evil. And so when we see Nikki coming over here, Sir Nikki, I see that what is going on in China was exactly what we had discovered with Richard C. Walker's Internet of Things, which is a uh, aggressive remote control of everything that moves, including humans. Well, that is yeah. what has been put into place in China under Dragonfly. So my question to you is, do you think that, uh, you know, since China is obsessed with becoming the leader in the Internet of Things, but we know that the Internet of Things was actually developed here in America, and we know that the patent was developed by Richard C. Walker, but is it possible that when Hillary moved Intrust, Axiom, uh, Live Ramp? All, all of its different names, to Shanghai, did she move the focus of the Internet of Things and the control of the Internet of Things there also, along with these uh, digital key certificate uh, authority uh, control system as well, which taxes everything on the Internet? Do you think that that is now going to be, Shanghai will be the control center for the Internet of Things? Well, I, you know, we don't know what we don't know, but I suspect it was always where I don't think anything moved. I think what they've done is they've manipulated the public relations. They had to have some excuse mm. to say people were moving. I think China is their safety valve. I think this is where they were going to run if the American people woke up and uh, the, these people started having legal liability. Well, it sure appears like that's coming. And um, and so they had to get out of Dodge before the sheriff showed up. Beautiful. It was a fake headshot. The shot. sheriff of Washington, D.C., District of Columbia. That oh. would be who? That is our man, Trump, in Washington. Yes, there now, go. therefore, this could be a fake headshot. It could be a fake out. We're moving to Shanghai. Don't even come looking for us. But what we really did is we moved to an offshore account in Wyoming. Well, here's the thing. Uh, I, I think you know this, and probably many people do, but computers are, are such that you can have servers placed all over the planet. And in fact, if you're running a legitimate uh, operation, you've got at least two backups of your, your primary servers, and you never want them in the same location or even in the same region because if the internet goes down and the network goes down in one region, you want to move all your activity to another region that's not down. Uh, and this could be for a number of things, whether for uh, um, uh, political instability, for just geography, just normal downtime. And so you move these things around. So my bet is all of these servers are already placed all over the planet, and they can be moved in a minute. Yeah, so, you pointed that out, and that really, it's its just, they can be anywhere they want. It doesn't matter. Right. Wherever they, they are decided. Where, wherever they want. <laughs> they could be on an island off of Georgia, wherever, it doesn't matter. Well, well, typically, you've got to have at least two feeds to the Internet with any server that you uh, put in place, and these are called local loops. And <clears throat> because of that, you're going to put those in various locations so that uh, you never have a situation where all of your servers are down. So if you have a primary and two backups, you have what's called five nines of reliability. You keep it up all the time. I know you are the expert in those things, and it's just wonderful to have someone who can explain these mysterious outages and this stuff and just say, not possible, false flag, you know, uh, don't even waste my time. And that's what's happening now, all these warnings that there's going to be these outages, and then we see these massive outages, and then it's denied the next day, or it, it's shocking. But anyway, I got a theory. Here's my theory. My theory is Sir Lord President Nikki Clegg is... Vice President. Vice President. Uh, oh, well, that's Vice President of Facebook and and, and, right. and ex-deputy... Uh, Prime Minister of Britain and 4,000 other official titles. Uh, I believe he has come for the following. We have seen that the owners of all of the social media groups, uh, including people like PayPal, Google, uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all of them that stole Leader Technologies uh, patents and their secrets and their trade secrets, their, international, uh, their IP, 
your intellectual property, we can see that the people who bought into that to begin with, all conflicted people, many of whom are judges, they got in early, they made a ton of money when it went public, and they've now all drawn their money out, as well as the big guns, the owners of these companies have drawn out huge amounts of their assets. We've also seen giant shifts as we are watching the central banks buy in to American central banks buy into the stock market and who do they buy? Fang. They buy Facebook. Okay, so they're vested up to their eyeballs, 33% in their entire uh, uh, asset uh, assets in their balance sheet. And so they are selling. And that's why we saw a big drop the other day and we keep seeing regular drops and gains, significant ones. I believe that that is happening and, uh, because they know that Facebook and the, uh, and the other social media, Google, for privacy problems, for all kinds of violations, for monopoly, for RICO, they're going down. And I believe that Sir Nicky may have been sent over to manage a more uh, slow approach to the collapse of Facebook because dude Zuckerberg is an idiot and he's not doing a good job and they can't fake the world out anymore. When Facebook gets hit with a massive financial $8 billion fine and not a single point drops in the stock market. It's pretty obvious that it's fake and that the yep. high frequency traders simply buy and sell so fast that it doesn't even appear on the board. And that's what I believe is happening. And I believe Sir nicky has been sent over for the slow collapse, the demise, the controlled demolition of Facebook. Uh, am I crazy? Well, by the way, he was having his discussions about this position uh, at the same time as Sandberg and uh, Zuckerberg were appearing before Congress. So I, I believe they're running behind the queen's skirts is what I think is going on here. Interesting. Well, but the queen, we don't know. Does the queen have the golden share in Facebook? <laughs> I don't think so, but... She probably has some massive control over it and, and massive investment in it, and it'd be fascinating. Keep in mind, Sir Jeffrey Patty was the head of the Intellectual Property Institute in London in the mid-'90s when this whole strategy got started with the uh, Walker Internet of Things. So I think, this, I think we're going to see the ultimate control of this group globally came out of London and not even i think they were directing the senior executive service and uh the folks at the highland forum and in clinton and didn't you name um someone who was british that was involved in the group down in uh, little rock arkansas well, there was some british connection that you had found because i had said wait a second this evil cabal of digital thieves and patent thieves had to have had some British influence. And I don't remember what you said, but uh, there's, well, Serco, what am I thinking? Of course, right. because the head of Circo. the patent office sold out to Serco. So right there, they, right. they didn't even have to have a representative. They just got Sir the Jeffrey contract. Patty. Yeah, they got the, they got the uh, a monopolistic contract with stealing the patents that that group was then going to use to build right on up to the Internet of Things and then right on up to... Our, to this very moment where they control the uh, federal key certificate uh, uh, authorizations and everything on the internet. And so what we're now seeing in, in my mind is, I think someone does own the internet. I think it's Hillary. And she's attempting to overthrow the queen by taking control of the very things that the queen needs to move her money to her offshore accounts back and forth, which is the internet. If you get control of the internet, you have control of the world economy. Then you have control of the world. Well, we used to hear the sun never set on the British Empire, and that they have appear to have developed a banking version of that, and that's what we're observing here. It's incredible. I don't understand I, I keep saying to you and to your researchers when i talk to them are you guys going to slow up on us are you, are you gonna are you gonna hit bottom yet is there going to be the ultimate sith lord are we going to find the true darth vader the evil emperor or do we just keep having to go through thousands of these sith lords not thousands we've named uh, quite a few but the point is is 
do you think we're ever going to hit bottom or do you think we actually in the privy council have found the people at the top well i mean when 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 the president the guy that led the privy council for five years takes over at facebook i think we're close boy i think they've they've had to send out their uh, top guns because everybody else is too afraid to do it that that i think is the bottom line uh that this blatant takeover of free speech in the country that is supposed to be the home of it has is being done blatantly by the ex deputy prime minister of britain that's disgusting right. uh, five eyes we need to poke out four of those eyes and leave only ours get rid of britain get rid of canada get rid of new zealand and get rid of australia cuz well, we've already you, demonstrated you, they're just as criminal he was he was in place at the privy council when um, uh, Christopher Steele started working on that dossier, what does that tell you? I, I mean, that alone uh, would uh, should cause an FBI investigation. Boris Johnson met personally and numerous times with George Papadopoulos, the person being framed up by uh, uh, Christopher Steele, Richard Dearlove, uh, Andrew Wood, Alexander Downer, the whole group of them, who are all British, Joseph Mifsud. And so it is absolutely, the spy gate was absolutely British spy gate. They are not our friends. They are our enemies. Robert Hannigan spied on Trump and the Trump Towers directly from Fort Meade, Maryland, the head of the NSA, with John Brennan's approval. What we're talking about here is in America... It looks as if this cabal that we've been going after, which I oftentimes name as, you know, three dozen people, maybe four dozen people. Uh, well, look at the British Privy Council. It's 600 criminals who aren't even bound by law, who have been doing this as a collective for hundreds right. of hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. Yes. And they have never been even uh, questioned. In many cases, they just simply back out of a country and then control it through the banks. And the Rothschilds and pedophilia, and pedophilia, Banks and pedoph- pedophilia, definitely. And and the pedophilia is when you are going to do horrible economic things to people, you're killing people. And pedophilia is killing the soul of anyone that you attack. And it's nothing more than basically being a serial killer. And we can literally say that these people that we're talking about, for instance, um. Wasn't it uh, Lord Malik Brown who wrote a couple slogans in Africa that caused an election to go the right. other way and South thousands Africa. and thousands of people died because of his simple, what he calls behavioral manipulation, that they can literally create a meme that causes an election to turn one way or the other and people to die? That's who we're dealing with. And so pedophilia is, is probably uh, just their uh, lower level entertainment compared to what they're really doing as serial killers. And, and I, it sounds like that's an exaggeration, but let's remember, it was only two years ago that the members of parliament were given a choice. Will you either give up pedophilia or your offshore accounts? And they chose to give up their offshore accounts. Now they all have to claim every offshore account and the money that's in it and, the, and how the money got there, but they don't have to claim the crimes of their own pedophilia. And they, real, re, right after that, put forth a bill to say that they wanted a child to have the right to decide to be um, sexually complicit with an act legally at age six. And then well, when that and, got and, in the news, it went to age nine. Were probably, guys and girls, were probably victims of pedophilia as well in these uh, uh, elite private schools. And so that be, that becomes its own type of control mechanism as, as people get triggered and blackmailed and, uh, and as they move along in their career, it becomes an ever-increasing threat to them to the point where the whole system is just totally dysfunctional. And it does explain so many things about why nothing seems logical in in what these people are doing it's because they're all hiding very deep sins i feel sorry for them but at the same time i am really sick of our country being driven by the the sins that these people are hiding and uh nothing is what it seems and that that's 
we need to get past that. We need to raise the bar on our level of consciousness. That's where we need to go. And the Brits taught it to the Clintons, and the Clintons taught it to the Obamas. And so Obama says, bring me your unaccompanied minors to the border, and I will human traffic them. Yeah. And now we can't find them. That is well, British. Well, so many of these people, yeah, they, they're, they're involved in these children's charities in Africa and these children's charities in, in Europe. I mean, it's amazing. The, you, you'd think that they were concerned about children, but what, what we now know is that uh, they're using these charities, quote, to uh, traffic children. I mean, it's just you can't make this stuff up. No, you can't. And the fact that you have the ex- Deputy Prime Minister of England coming to take over Facebook, which basically is a global internationalist, a globalist internationalist transnational company that doesn't pay taxes in America, that is a ripoff, that is a lie, that works with the military and was always a weaponized, uh, it was an experiment in weaponization of the internet and psyops through social control and social uh, uh, behavior uh, modification. And so we now have literally the Brits coming over and just saying, we can't wait any longer. We're just going to blatantly come and control your election. If we don't get Donald Trump out of office, we globalists all go down. And I don't know. I imagine that every member of the Queen's Privy Council is, um, has, has made their vow of fealty to globalism. Right. Well, they've certainly been uh, they've vowed fealty to the Queen, and <clears throat> which is fine for England, maybe. But over here, we have a constitution that we hopefully are still following. So, from the standpoint of securities law, I encourage everyone to look at the timeline that our researchers put together, and get that timeline to every decision influencer you can, because uh, Sir Nick has a fiduciary duty, according to the business judgment rule, to identify every uh, material conflict of interest he has in being involved in Facebook. And when you look at this list, it's just just no way this guy can operate in this country. This isn't St. Nicholas coming for the holidays. This is the (laughs) Sith Lord Nicholas coming to take away... Sir Nicholas. He's not a lord. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. That's right. I I get those titles really confused. I I would... I have other titles for them that I can't say on the air. I but a uh, good old Sir Nicky, Sir Nicholas, is an evil Sith Lord. He is not bringing us any Christmas presents, folks. So realize what's going on, dump Facebook, and understand that the subliminal programming is so profound that if you don't find a good place to get your news, then you better do your research on your own and you better develop some astounding qualities of discernment because in our age of falsehood politics it's very hard to tell who our friends